everybody, and welcome to Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 46. We're going to go with Jeremy for the Bipcot No Gov license. Yes, as always, the Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by the Bipcot No Government license. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at bipcot.org. So today we have Shane Buell, who is a uh, voluntarist agorist from Indiana. Uh, He's a contributor to the pullout method, uh, Facebook pages, and agorism. And uh, he founded the Facebook page, The Iconoclast, to uh, call out some of the uh, sociopaths who are vying for power (laughs) in the coming election cycle. So uh, we'll we'll talk about some of his... um, his, his uh, journey to volunteerism and, and how uh, our podcast has affected him in that journey. So, uh, Shane, thanks for, for coming on the show. Oh, it's great to be on. I've uh, followed a lot of you guys for a while, and uh, I'm great to be glad to be here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really happy to see you. Uh, you know, I've seen your following. Uh, you know, my my shows for a while, and and you know, liking my posts, and you you got more uh, more active, and now you start your own page. So I'm really happy to see that. So nice, you know, to see people start their own uh, their own stuff. You know, because that's how we started, right? We just like <laughs> talking well, one day, and you're like you're like, you know, we should start something. What are we gonna call it? Like, and I remember I remember when Dave was like, I got the perfect name. <laughs> you guys are gonna love it. See, no, I remember that because because uh, uh, Dave, you know, you're like I, I consider myself like the Johnny Appleseed. I'm, I'm just throwing seeds around and planting in people's minds, <laughs> right? And it just came to you, and I'm like, wow, that's an awesome name. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it hadn't been taken for some odd reason, and it also has a really heavy conservative tinge just when you look at the name. So it pulls in a lot of unsuspecting uh, listeners. Uh, people message us, uh, oh, oh, wow, I totally didn't expect that from your your show. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, uh, a long time ago, I uh, used to listen to uh, one of my first podcasts was like uh, that I listened to was on uh, UCY TV, and uh, there was a three-way debate on there between a conservative, a liberal, and an anarchist. And it was probably the first time I had actually been exposed to legitimate anarchist philosophy, free of all the connotation that comes along with it from the mass media and whatnot, the propaganda. So. Uh, I was a conservative at the time, and I totally expected this uh, logical conservative to shut down these two liberals. And it <laughs> turned out that the anarchist was the most logical of the three, <laughs> and uh, and it totally blew my mind. And I had to look into this, you know. And uh, so I eventually discovered at the time what you know anarcho-capitalism. Even though I don't consider myself an NCAP so much anymore as a voluntarist. Or, or an anar- uh, an agorist, or or just a regular anarchist. But anyway, um, once I you know got exposed to the philosophy, as they say, that what's the difference between a minarchist and an anarchist? Uh, it really can be only six months, uh, and that's probably just an average. Some people go faster, some people go slower. Um, I was actually a minarchist for over twenty years. Uh, you know, I was uh, I supported John Hagelin of the Natural Law Party in the year two thousand. And then in uh, 2004, I was a registered libertarian, and I supported uh, Michael Badnerick. Uh, and then in 2008, I got really excited about Ron Paul, and uh, I did meet him twice. I met him in 2008 and in 2012. Uh, I was a delegate for the Indiana State Convention, uh, and they broke the rules to change the rules, and they had those uh, Diebold electronic voting machines. And so I got to see it all from the inside, and I saw just the extent of the voter fraud and the corruption, and I realized that changing it from the inside really didn't work, you know. And so I attacked from that angle for a long time. And uh, in 2012, I tried it again, but uh, it was it was kind of evident by the primary that he wasn't going to be nominated. No, and so he was I kind of dropped buried. out of that whole thing. Yeah. I've never seen anyone get politically blackballed as bad as Ron Paul, as maybe Barry Goldwater. I really, I mean, that's the only point of reference. I mean, there's probably some old king that, like, you know, or some prince that would have inherited an entire kingdom that got shanked in his bathroom or something. So there's probably worse political things that have happened. I'm, but, I'm, I'm sure it, I'm sure it happens all the time. It just, you don't always hear about it. I mean, it's funny what you said, Shane, about, you know, seeing it from the inside. I mean, the same thing happened to me. That's what eventually pushed me over the edge. I was... 
I had already met my first voluntarist and had start, just started looking into the, the philosophy, but I was still a, uh, a, you know, just in general of, of taking libertarianism to its ultimate conclusions, but I was still a member of the Libertarian Party and running for local office <laughs> before I finally, before the switch finally went up, because I, I got to see what happens from the inside, and I got to see how the Libertarian Party got blackballed on the very local level here, you know, to the point where, like, they didn't even hide it. The Republicans and the Democrats colluded to keep the Libertarians off the ballot exactly. altogether, just on a local, it was a county level, like, county level positions. They were completely disenfranchised all over the, the mm -hmm. nation, and I think that's what led in 2012 to the creation of the Tea Party a bit. Um, and yeah. I was already jaded in 2008, but I tried again in tw in 2012. Uh, and I saw it during the, um, the, the primary that he wasn't going to make it, and so I kind of started to go the, the Tea Party route for a while, and I listened to Mark Levin, you know, and uh, yeah. yeah um, I that have all his books. A, that was a step backwards. Yeah. <laughs> do you have um, Liberty I, I, and Tyranny? I don't, but I do have the Liberty Amendments. I, I have all of his books. I have the Liberty Amendments signed. Jeremy I met him. Sign. I had a picture. I had a picture with him, which sadly, actually, the caption on Facebook actually read "Me meeting the Great One." Uh, so <laughs> that is. That, that's, you know, that, I used that's, to that. be a big Levin fan as well. <laughs> what a long, strange trip it's been, and what a long way we've come. Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, after the whole uh, Tea Party thing started up, uh, there was a point during the government shutdown when uh, Harry Reid called the Tea Party anarchists. Yes. And I, I was remember like, that, yeah. you know, at the time during the shutdown, I was always, I, I, I kept saying that I would rather have no government than too much. And if they're going to call me an anarchist, then so be it. <laughs> but Mark Levin had a completely different reaction. And he lashed out against, you know, the claim, and he was totally anti-anarchism. And this was around the time that I had heard that debate, and I knew something was up. So I started looking into it, and I saw a lot of places where I did disagree with Levin and the conservatives, and I did agree with the anarchists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you find yourself agreeing more and more. <laughs> yeah. yeah what when I first, uh, you know, got pretty vocal, I considered myself more an anarcho-capitalist, and I was pretty vocal about that. And I, and I posted one, uh, one thing on Facebook um, disparaging the anarcho-communists, and then I was attacked by a lot of anarcho-communists, but not like, um, like, you know, I, I think a lot of us, um, you know, begin to talk down to them because you know we think that they're ignorant of economics and everything. But the way I look at it now is that you know. If they want to live in a, in a society, in a commune, in an eco-village where they have shared property, and that's a voluntary thing, what's wrong with that, right? Exactly. That's, that's, that's their choice, right? That, you know, mm -hmm. Sure, they can do that as long as, of course, if they don't infringe on every, anybody else. But So that's the whole thing to me with voluntarism and why I've kind of, I, I guess it's similar to you, less and less calling myself an anarcho-capitalist. I'm, I'm just an anarchist and a voluntarist. I think it's just, it's just a, a general way to say, you know, um, you know, we don't think that any particular, I mean, I, I still, in my deep, deep down, I still believe capitalism is the most efficient economic system and would produce the most prosperity and wealth and increased standard of living and things like that. But some people don't want that. You know, if you want to be well, a monk, if you want to be a monk, then you don't want, you don't want, you know, an iPad, an iPod, you don't want a laptop, you don't want a Ferrari, you know, you just want to, you just want your loincloth. <laughs> and what's wrong with that? And hot, and hot sauce. Well. If you're certain monks, your robes, not your loincloth. Come on, or dude. whatever, robe, yeah. whatever. <laughs> They're whatever. monks, not Tarzan. Jesus, man, what are you talking about? And he <laughs> and he's the Spanish guy here. You know, it's. Well, uh, it's funny though. If you call it a free, the free market instead of capitalism, uh, the left doesn't seem to react quite the same way towards it. And uh, I have actually kind of studied the left a little bit, and I like to draw a distinction between Marx and Bakunin and Proudhon and and the rest. Because Marx was a statist, he was a change it from the inside kind of guy, and we've seen where that road leads, you know. And uh, I like to think that there is room for unicorn ideologies like voluntary socialism or anarcho-communism, or even you know like voluntary minarchies somehow. But 
you know, I, I don't. It's like a. It wouldn't story. be minarchy then. Well, that's well, <laughs> right. yeah, but I mean, that's that's the whole idea of like the the panarchy thing, which I think we touched on a little bit with what was that last week? We had, we had Chase on. We we talked about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, the whole idea that, at least from you know, I mean, I, I kind of agreed with him that you know, from from where I sit. I mean, I, I agree with you guys. I, I, I've saw, I've done the same thing as Danilo. I've softened my stance on it. Um, I mean, I never actually ran around calling myself an ANCAP. People just kept calling me that and assuming that because I like the colors and I, I do tend to fly the flag just because, you know, whatever. Um, but uh, buy into the false dichotomy. Yeah, so it's like, but I, uh, I've, saw, I've definitely softened my stance and I, I hold a similar position where, you know, I think, you know, if, if you can make it work in your community, great, but... The one thing Chase said uh, last week that really kind of hit me again was, yeah, it's great to say that, but realistically, the only way it seems feasible is if there is an overarching um, yeah. sense of property rights, right. because, uh, if the it's not, yeah. because if there's not, then it doesn't matter if they want to have their voluntary commune and we want to, you know, we, we want to have, like, say, a more ANCAPish society. If they're not going to abide by property rights at all, they're just going to be coming in and like trying to take our, you know, take our stuff, thinking they can use our stuff, and giving, giving hell, giving all hell if somebody shoots them for it. And it's just like, you're not really going to get very far with that. So there does, as much as there doesn't have, you know, I mean, you could try it without an overarching one, but that's the only one that really seems feasible to have something in place that at least property rights are respected for the people that wish them to be respected. You know, and then and then then you can have these. That's the only way you can have these separate communities, because otherwise everything bleeds into everything, and you run into the problem where the people who want communism think it should spread everywhere, and the people who would prefer capitalism don't really have any demarcation lines for anything to actually say. Well, this is mine, and you can't be on it, and you know. Yeah, I guess I, I can see that, but uh, I'm. As a, as a true like black flag agorist, you know, I like to think that the left and the right can find ways to decide what to own and how to trade it, you know, uh, you know, peacefully. And I think, you know, that uh, a lot of these uh, property norms uh, can be a lot more localized uh, instead of having it, the entire country have private property one way or personal property the other way. I think, you know, the way common law used to be and uh, the way private law could be. Uh, a lot more localized, and I think we might see, you know, perhaps property norms do something uh, like that. Um, yeah, well, I, I could see that, but again, the, the the issue is not the ability for each community to have their own set of rules. It's the fact that, say, you have because the the specific example, you know, Chase brought up, which which made, like I said, made me start to think about this again. Is say you have two communities next to each other, one's more of an ANCAPish type. Um, the other one's a more Ancomish type. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have caught that one. I, I missed that one. If they yeah. don't, if, if the Ancomish, Ansoge, whatever, you know, anybody in that, on, on that more, uh, end of the spectrum doesn't respect property rights at all, if they only believe, if they believe that only personal property is the only valid property, then mm -hmm. what's to not necessarily stop them from it, from taking your property or saying that this should be communal like especially along the edge of the where the two communities supposedly meet but if they again if they don't have property if they don't believe in pro if they don't if they only believe in communal property like you know they're oh you're only just advocating for fascism jeremy come on dude neo-feudalism yeah. duh yeah exactly um but so 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 what happens then like because in their mind you're in the wrong for protecting your property because it's not your property in <laughs> your in your mind in your mind they're wrong for for invading your property or or trespassing or taking your property right. because it's your property what do you do then if there's no overarching um you know property rights still reign supreme even if you choose to voluntarily um advocate them yeah, that's a tough question. And like I say, like almost no single person has all the answers. Oh no, I, I don't expect anybody to have the answers. I said that's yeah. that's what makes that's what made me ponder again because it's like, 
I've been I've been advocating panarchy it more like the whole idea of that and just not really settling myself because I I'm, I'm the same way like I see the benefits of communism on a you know the the like the ANCOS on a small scale I see that I can see how it could work and I see how you know voluntary communes can work I see how you know the with how the mutualists talk like I see how something that they talk about could work so I'm not really you know I still like Danilo I still deep down capitalism still makes them you know but just voluntary interactions still make you know oh. and and the, and the private means of production still make the most sense to me i will always agree with that but uh, sometimes when you're talking to the left you have to you know how they differ on terminologies and definitions mm -hmm. so sometimes you have to use words that are less triggering like sure. free market you know so that oh yeah know, yeah a lot of them are down with market anarchism you know but they're not cool with capitalism for some reason because they don't understand corporatism yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's also important to um, to make our our ideas understandable to the common person. Like when we're talking to other anarchists and other flavors of anarchists, sure, maybe you know, um, you know, we we can define capitalism more specifically. We can define these things. But when we talk to a regular person, just saying anarchist is like emotional oh. enough. Oh, <laughs> or, especially you know, just yeah. defining these basic terms. What's a volunteer? What's an anarchist? You know, that's that's enough. <laughs> I get that with you know? friends and family a lot. And one thing that I can, I guess, walk them in baby steps towards is uh, using libertarian, because I've been a libertarian for 20 some years and uh, they're familiar with that. And so I try to explain to them that the, the pure, consistent libertarian philosophy uh, will ultimately conclude here, you know. And it's a word that has a lot of connotation, but when you get beyond that, you see, the, it, what it, see it for what it really is. I, I but, like it when. I like when they come to that to that conclusion themselves. When you, when you you know you talk about how you know state funded education fails, how you know monopoly on on currency fails, how you know monopoly on on, on uh, moving pieces of paper, you know the USPS fails, and they're like, well, what do you want, anarchy? Yes, exactly. Right. <laughs> but they think <laughs> that they means come chaos. To the themselves, <laughs> right? Yeah. And you then you have to explain to them that well, we're surrounded by anarchy, you know. There's no law that says how you should act with your friends, you know, and family or people that you meet in the store. Not yet. You know? no, not yet. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, like, and I like the way Larkin puts it. It's like, it's like, if you really think people are so evil, you know, imagine people going into such crowded places like a mall and how easily each of us can, can be harmed or killed by another person. And yet most of the time, nothing happens. You know, most of the time people go about their business. They, they have other things to do. They don't want to harm other people for the most part. You do have crazy people who are in the, uh, in the extreme minority, and then, uh, and then some of them uh, get into positions of high power, <laughs> call them politicians. But uh, for the most part, you know, people don't care about harming and about killing and maiming and murdering and, and raping, you know. Um, and, and so, yeah, you got to remind them that you're surrounded by lawlessness, by anarchy. <laughs> yeah, chaos, chaos is inevitable. That's why oh, you just want chaos. So, no, no, no. Chaos is inevitable. You think what's going on in Syria and the rest of the world right now is order? Right. You're well, crazy. I, I'm a bit of a chaos theory mathematician as well, and I know how the universe itself is built on scalar chaos, you know, uh, and it's, it's really a beautiful Well, thing. we can only assume. <laughs> well, you know, uh, well, just just a hundred years ago, we thought the world was flat, and apparently, some people still do. So, well, um, we can only guess at this point. I, here's that's the thing: why I hate to get into so many frivolous debates because I, I did spend like the last year almost just debating a, a lot of stuff, like left versus right and whatnot. When we could have been, you know, practically applying some of these principles, you know. And yeah. then that's why I credit my friendship with Danilo. It was not long after I became an ANCAP, I think I changed my profile to the black and gold, you know. And I think Danilo was the one who reached out and friend requested me. And But then all the stuff that he was sharing was just really radical, you know. Hmm. Uh, and I and I was I was really getting into it. And uh, Danilo think, the radical. Yeah, yeah. And so, <laughs> uh, so then I, you know, I started watching Peaceful Anarchism and... Uh, I just I'm I have a lot in common with Danilo, you know, and uh, then you guys started Seeds of Liberty, and uh, I've kind of known Jeremy from other uh, forums and pages uh, before, uh, and uh, my former life. Yeah. The so you know, that, during the debate days, if you will. <laughs> so anyway, uh, now you know that we're applying some of this and spreading the message. We've kind of purified and refined our message, and now it's time to spread it. You know, uh, the Seeds of Liberty. You know, and I love this podcast. This is one of my favorite ones because you know you get to watch it, 
and it's like you get to know you guys, you know, really well. And uh, so anyway, um, yeah, if it wasn't for Danilo, I probably wouldn't have known Jeremy or Dave or the Seeds. And uh, about four months ago, you know, I was getting behind on all the podcasts and everything. I was working a full-time job, and I uh, actually wrecked my car. Um, and uh, I uh, shattered my leg, and I broke in five places and shattered my femur. But I had a lot of downtime, and so I started catching up on podcasts. And so I started watching your podcast, uh, started listening to Fiends, uh, and, and I started watching a lot of other podcasts, but uh, I always come back to this one and the Fiends, and uh, yeah. Um, well, the main thing we strive for on this show is logical consistency. I know it, I know I don't always bring that to the table, but I always well, attempt not to. You, not you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know I don't always bring that to the table, but I yeah. attempt to. Uh, I Even, think that's. Uh, I think it's really important for for people if they're going to put their heads out here like we're doing to to speak about a philosophy that they stay logically consistent. You, you can see what happens when people don't stay logically consistent. People flock away from them like, you know. And a lot of times, like a pile of shit from other ideologies like conservatism and whatnot. They might have been in ANCAP now for six months, but they might still have a little bit of baggage left over, which you might not notice until something like, you know, Paris or borders happen, you know, or Trump. Oh, you know, Jesus. Can Cantwell was a real big surprise to me because I didn't see that coming. You know, I had heard other people say Cantwell's the cop, whatnot, but then when I saw him, you know, go full potato, <laughs> I was like, wow, you know, I thought he was an anarchist. Uh, I'm, I'm still not 100% convinced that he's not trying to pull off the greatest troll in the world. Um, <laughs> well, that's just but, not my style, you know, that uh, neo-reactionary brutalism approach. Well, is... no, it's, yeah, I, I, I understand that, but I, I'm still not convinced about but th we actually did talk about this. They, they live in this weird fantasy land, like where it's white versus black, you know, Mexican versus this, and it's really? like we've got to stick with our own race and, and protect our own race. And it's like if you uh, if you've dropped that far down, I mean, goddamn, we might as well just set off all the nukes now and just get it over with. Because if you at this point in the game, if you can't see past your own race, I really don't want to well, consort that, with you. Well, that's your that's your choice, Dave. But there's, I, I there's, there's a that. lot there's a lot of people that that still hold close to their culture, their race, whatever for for. There's a lot of it, idiots that do that. There are, but there's ones who do it for... I wouldn't, I wouldn't call them people. They're idiots. There's people who do it because they don't know any better, man. There's a lot of people Well, that's what an idiot world. is. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody who doesn't know it's an idiot is someone who's ignorant. After, 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 after Dave goes on and on about how we strive for logical consistency, and he recognizes that he does it. He just goes on a tirade about absolutes, how all these people are idiots, and, you know. Oh, look, anyway. okay. <laughs> yeah, wow. I, I wait, 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 wait. You're saying they're not an idiot. Okay. So. I, try to refuse, I try to resist giving in to those false dichotomies and the cognitive distances, you know, uh, because they try to divide and compartmentalize us with, you know, all these different ideologies. And I think what we need is like a unified front. You know, we need the left and the right to to work with the minarchists and whatnot, if they if they will, you know, to you know to try to you know apply some of these principles. You know, I think we've refined them enough, and now we need to you know start putting them to work. I don't think you can combine the two when one side is free shit and the other is basically leave me alone. I want uh, to be left alone. Well. But... I don't. I don't necessarily. I don't. Again, I don't necessarily think that everybody, even in the left, you know, in the left on the left anarchist side, they're not all about free shit. Well, free shit as long as it's voluntary. Yeah, right? but I, I think I, 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 th I, I think you're absolutely right though about the putting it into practice. And as far as like refining it, I mean, everybody has to do that on their own to be able to like personalize the arguments for yourself to be able to, to to be able to effectively spread the message you can't you can't just regurgitate somebody else's words That's you, true. You, you, you have, have you have to actually... you, have to, you have to be able to formulate your own i mean you can take other people's arguments you know this again i i i, I i'm just gonna refer i'm re referencing chase again what something he said last week about his book that he just he took some arguments you know some of the what he considered the better arguments on certain specific topics and he kind of you know any term but he you know made them his and then also made them more digestible for the average individual versus you know taking like human action down to a level you know to say to to an act to a level where the the person who may have a, a, a less of an attention span can can actually grasp it you know um so i think i think getting the uh 
you know, get, getting the message out there is, as far as refining it, everybody has to do that on their own. But the, the more important thing is, is actually putting it to practice, like you said. And I, I mean, I've been promoting this for a while. I, I think one of the best things you, people can do in that regard is to get into business for yourself in some capacity and, and be able to be able to provide a service for people um, I mean, even if it's not one that can compete with something the state does, you know, because that's the ultimate to be able to create something that somehow will be able to function without getting shut down by the state that actually competes with something to be to be able to show others. Because that's the whole thing, because when people always ask the, the inevitable questions, well, what would happen in X? How would you handle X? Oh, in, oh, man. You know, like. And the, and, the, and the whole thing is, like, we can give these theories and we can say, well, this happens now here and why wouldn't it happen now there? But most people need a little more than that. You can't, you know, when you look at the level of indoctrination most people have had, you can't really I mean, necessarily blame them for that. So, to be, but to be, to be able to provide not just to talk about it, to be able to say, well, here, here's this, here's this thing. This can be done right now. We can do this right now and replace it. Um, like, that's the ultimate, like I said. But even if you can't do that, just to start any business, you know, and be able to incorporate these ideas into your business and then or service or whatever you know whatever it is i think we have to to worry i think we have to worry about making businesses lagging the lagging indicator of government proof make so so to say like we have to we have to worry about stuff that we can't can't get co-opted by the state i think uber's a good one i don't see the government taking over uber anytime soon but you look at what Uber has done. It's gave countless people jobs, and it's destroyed monopolies. But they it's, know, but they don't. But yeah, but the problem with that is they don't have to take it over necessarily. They, they can, didn't. Yeah, they didn't even have do, to take it, it over. It's only. It's not even a. It's only. Oh, a oh, oh you're saying the they, government. Not, they can shut it down by. They can shut it down through regulations, like they've well, done. Oh, they could. Something. Yeah. So, so they don't have think, to necessarily take it over to be able to destroy the industry. They just have to be able to provide protection for the industries that are the, the people well, that are already in it, that are like the tax you know the tax apparently the, uber's lobbying group has a little bit more money than the taxi lobbies at this point like it's, said, so it seems well no it's they're they're being successful in some places but they're still that's how that's how they would shut them down they don't necessarily have to take them over i mean eventually they could try i'm sure um but i i don't think it's necessarily the case that it has to go that way that's all i'm saying so, so Jeremy, I think uh, you know your idea of starting a business, um, being an entrepreneur. I can definitely see you um, after you achieve your monumental success with your pet sitting empire. Once you're long gone, the bureaucrats are going to be like, you know what? This field needs a license, a permit, <laughs> some regulations. We need to get in there so this does not happen again. I'm surprised. Not, <laughs> I'm surprised I haven't done it already. <laughs> uh, being the oligarch that I am, according to Dave. <laughs> But they, they, he uh, runs. He runs with no competitors. Okay, he's got a st- basically is, a. St- yeah, he's yeah, got a basically a state-sanctioned monopoly. I just. I just had coffee with one of my quote-unquote competitors the other <laughs> too day. Easy, too easy. Too easy. I'm gonna help them out while they're on vacation. So give me a break. Bro. Oh, look at him so trying not, to so swoop not, in. So now you're colluding behind closed. <laughs> you're just, colluding just, with just, other I'm oligarchs. Do you understand? Work, that's all. Do you understand? I said oligarch. Okay, that means there's many of you. You're just talking. You're fraternizing with one of your fellow oligarchs. No, you, no, you said or I no can we call them doligarchs? Dogagarchs. 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 Yeah. Dog- <laughs> there you go. Walkagarchs. Yeah, yeah. So, Jeremy, let, let me just go. I, I would. So, so you. So your angle um, is, you know, with the entrepreneurship, which is awesome. And I think uh, another way that we can, um, you know, improve the world peacefully, nonviolently, is through having kids. <laughs> and and I, and I think Dave would go the opposite way and say, no, actually, this world is so horrible, so messed up. I don't want to have kids. But that's that's exactly why we need to have kids to educate and raise the next generation of peaceful, compassionate and, uh, you know, logical minded people. Right. That's one that's... cannot say for certain. I mean, I, I oh, agree I, mostly with your assumption that people I, should be re- reproducing. But I think we, I, I honestly, though, I think we'd be much better off. Even if even as a blanket statement, the people that don't think they want to have kids or don't want to have kids, yeah, let's just let them keep going with that. That's okay. They they can do have you that. really want to the people who well, don't want to do it. That's fine. Do don't you really want a mini Dave ever, uh, running around here? Do you really do you really want that happening? No, Dave. I don't. I'll give him an old smartphone. I can imagine a mini Dave. First principles. First principles. 
I think peaceful parenting is the way to go. Although I have no children myself, if I ever did, that's the way I would uh, go about it. But uh, having not ever having had kids, I would probably be more likely to be the, a, a teacher type. Uh, I still want the next generation to, to know a lot of the things that they need to know. And whether I have kids or not, I still want to teach in some capacity the things that we've learned the hard way to the next generation. Sure. No, absolutely. I, I you know, you, you, if you have, I mean, I've said that before too. If you, even if you don't have kids or don't want to have kids, um, you know, if you have any younger, any younger, you know, people in your life, you know, whether they be oh. nieces or neighborhood <laughs> kids, or you know, if you're not, if you're not an actual. If you're not teaching any kind of class or anything like that, if you just if you just have people in your life like that, by all means, you know, like try to, you know, obviously don't, you know, don't go, don't, don't, don't go overstepping the bounds with the parents too much. But, you know, because right. that'll run into other problems. But, you know, that, that that's an opportunity right there, too. Yeah, I have a lot of friends and family that have kids and I do spread the message of peaceful parenting, you know, to them, even though I don't have kids myself. I know that, you know, that's the right thing. You know, I think that's the right way to go. No, I, I I agree. I mean, I I, I think um, the whole uh, uh, you know it 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 being a uh, necessary but insufficient means, as it was put last week, um, is is accurate though because it, I I think it's a definitely a big part of it. Uh, oh, yeah. But just just rely. You know, there are people that think that this that I mean, for a while there, I I ran into a bunch of people that seemed to think that was the only way, and that was that's all it was going to take. It's like, well, first of all, that would take multiple, multiple, multiple generations. And to bank to to put everything on that seems kind of insane. Right. Yeah. You can't ever put all your eggs in one basket, and exactly. we do have to educate the adults too. Yeah. The you know because that I mean I, I've I, I've always asserted that the the more the more people that you know either either the same age as you or maybe a little older that you can at least get thinking about these things now, even if they don't fully you know accept it and they 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 continue on it's like it's still the opportunity to pass the message it's still like they may pick up on one part of it and then pass that information on to somebody else in their life and, and you know and it's still it's still it's there's still an opportunity because you know it's the whole you know you can't teach an old dog new tricks like the only people i've really run into that i, I think are i hate to use the word hopeless but like i've come in, i've come into contact with some like you know people 85 plus that when I've discussed these ideas with them, they have actually said that they get it. Like they've been able to, you know, they followed the logic and so it was basically like that, that aha moment with that, like, oh, wow, really? I've never thought of it that way. But they still at the end walked away from it, like literally with, I think one of them actually did say the words, but the other ones pretty much alluded to something along the lines of, well, I'm gonna die soon anyway, so what the hell does it matter? <laughs> oh, wow. so, and, and I'm the nihilist. <laughs> no, but I'm the... Dave, 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 you have competition there. Oh but my I, God, I, Danilo! I, I, can, I can get the market demands. If you're 85, 90, all 95, of the nihilists are dying. You know, <laughs> if you're that old, I, I can I can understand it to a certain extent, but it's still to me it's still a selfish position because it's like you know I could take that. It's like well. Well, you know, I wasted a lot of my life already, so I might as well have some fun now. And you know, you could just pass the buck to the next guy. But like I said, other than those people, who I think are pretty much hopeless because they just don't care, um, you know, you could still reach anybody of just about any age. And if you could just get them to see, you know, something, it's like whatever little bit they can do. If they're inclined to try to help spread the message afterwards, it's just all all these all these additional ears that you can get these messages into just ups the possibility of it of of everything happening quicker oh i totally you know agree. so that's what that that that's why i i don't i don't i mean I, I think it's great to focus on children but i i'm just like you know anybody who wants to listen here come here let's talk about something <laughs> yeah my uh my, my audience is uh you know homeschooling mothers jeremy's audience is you know, what is it ukrainian blonde short <laughs> <laughs> One, I don't even remember. What was that about? I forget all about. Was that, that about the lady? Oh, the that's chin? right. No, the I, I found out later. Apparently, she was Italian. She just sounded like she had a Ukrainian accent. Uh, but I, oh yeah, the woman who attacked me because I wouldn't. Uh... You're Italian and you couldn't pick up an Italian accent. No, I, this was not. This she definitely sounded Russian, just, man. I'm telling you. you know, I, what are we even keeping these borders open for if we're not even gonna attach? <sighs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, I forgot. Anyways, about so so Shane, I feel like you haven't chimed in uh, quite a bit here but uh you know so you uh you like our group uh how, oh, how yeah. is it dealing 
uh, on the outside with the the whirlwind that is me. I post, I feel like, way too much, but it's hard to stay quiet these days. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, like I said, uh, Seeds of Liberty, um, I think, is one of the better formats out of all the stuff that I've seen. And uh, I, I have come a long way, you know, from, you know, the conservative I used to be. And uh, I think, uh, you know, Jeremy has taken a similar path, and I have, uh, you know, some similar life experiences, I think, to Danilo. And uh, and Dave, I've seen, you know, you go at it with uh, other podcasts, and I was rooting for you all along, you know. So, like, I think you three really uh, fit my style a lot. So I'm really glad to come on this podcast, you know. And We, we uh, try to keep everything real, real funny and, and as – as you know, as surface level as possible. We, we, this this show is for the, the the person that might happen to come across it. You know, we can't really get into heavy theory on this on every episode, because if the casual observer just happens to see an episode on it, do we ever get into heavy <laughs> on every episode? Do we ever get into heavy? We we get into some pretty heavy stuff, man. I mean, we went two hours on that basically why incrementalism won't work. That, that video con- that video game conversation was uh, yeah, that was that was some deep stuff. The video game? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was very deep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not was, uh, I'm not picking on that one. I actually really enjoyed that, that one. That was a fun one. I haven't listened to it yet. I've been saving it. So, I, I, you know, it's so funny. I forget when I when I, I used to do my magic. I used to have a Magic the Gathering podcast, and I would forget what I said on the podcast. I'm kind of like a uh, a truck that's got the, the the gas pedal taped down, and you just point it in a direction. Dave, you, you say that like that's to surprise anybody that you. No, I just I, and then I go back and listen, and I'm like, wow, I had some pretty good points. <laughs> yeah, Dave. I don't even remember running. saying it. Yeah, uh, Dave always hits the ground running, and I really like how he says, you know, attack at all angles because it really, you know, some people might uh, they get those little small victories sometimes here and there, but uh, you know, uh, I even have my own you know particular angle of attack where I try to understand where the person's coming from and deliver the, you know, I tailor the, most, the least discrepant message to their previously held beliefs and then walk them backwards in baby steps towards, you know, a le- less authoritarian position. Yeah, I think, and, I think uh, we all have our approach, you know. It's always, it, I guess it's nice uh, to, to get somebody in that question phase. You know, that's, that's always my goal is to, you know, get somebody questioning things. You know, maybe give somebody a little, you know, a video to watch or, or you know, part of a book to watch or maybe a chapter in a book and be like, Hey, I'd really like to know what you think about that. Could you please tell me what you think about it? If you, if you get a chance to check it out and that right there just gets them right into the question phase a lot faster than saying, Hey, you're a stupid blind statist. Here's yeah. why, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Instead of triggering their reactions, mm-hmm. you know, they're, you know, pro pre-programmed, uh, you can try to relate to them on, on some level or some curiosity they have, you know, and, and build on that. Uh, and uh, so I don't try to, you know, uh, trigger feels and stuff when I go into threads like, uh, like the Google voluntarism thread. Uh, like whenever something's posted in there, I don't try to like go and trigger negative reactions because you're going to turn people off to voluntarism. So I try to be well behaved when I, when I go there. Well, yeah. And that's because you believe in this message so much that you don't even want to tarnish it. You know, I think, I think people that, that, that do tarnish it, uh, are, are people that should be ignored as well. And I'm not trying to hold volunteerism up to some kind of st- cult-like standard. I'm just saying that it's a very principled thing to be a voluntarist, and if someone's compromising their principles, they should be ignored, mm-hmm. in my That's opinion. The, the freedom of disassociation as yeah, well. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm not point telling point. anybody to do anything. I'm just saying if you want to be around logical consistency, you have to you have to filter your – you got to do it yourself. <laughs> Other people aren't going to do it for you. No. Lead by example. Yeah, my, my focus has always uh, been on uh, politeness and courtesy. And, you know, when somebody comments under one of my posts, doesn't matter how, you know, aggressive they are, I always say thank you for commenting and then, you know, go into why, you know, they're completely wrong. So much, yeah, I know. So sometimes, it's, sometimes it's almost like you're reading off a teleprompter when you start those things. It's always the same. It's always the same. Like, thank you so much for taking the time to write to me. So like, really so like, so like, professional and rigid, and then oh. he'll, then, then he'll, shred, then he'll shred, then he'll, sh- then he'll subtly shred them, and then end up with like, but and thank you again so much, and I hope you <laughs> like, it's so like, <laughs> Ch- J- see, Jeremy, cool, J- smooth style, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little more aggressive than that. Jeremy, in some of my responses. 
Jeremy, Danilo only read the first few and the last few chapters of How to Win Friends and Influence <laughs> Others. He's missing that middle chunk, you know, the part where you, you don't tell someone to go fuck off. I'm kidding. Danilo doesn't do that. It, no. I couldn't imagine a world where Danilo tells someone to fuck off. <laughs> no, that's, a, that's definitely a parallel universe. But, uh, but yeah, I think it's, it, it's important <laughs> enough, it, to some sense, you know, stroke the ego because then then when you do that, their defenses drop, right? Everything is relaxed. The, or, or even using comedy. That's what I do when I, uh, I'm talking to people in, you know, not on Facebook, like in real life. And I make jokes. I crack jokes, get them laughing, right? And especially if they're strangers, you know, somebody you never met, you just met on the street or the playground or somebody, just get them laughing, calm them down. And then you can, you know, go into whatever you want. And most of the time, they're open. They're, you know, have an open mind to uh, thinking about a different perspectives. So, Danilo's yeah, the only grown idea. man I say I've heard talking about meeting other people at a playground, and I love it. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. I'm not knocking Danilo. I just, if if Jeremy said he was meeting people at a playground, I, it would be a little suspicious. Right. That's totally different. Hey, wait a minute. I have kids. That's not right. <laughs> no, it's just. Well, all right. If you saw me out at a playground, call the cops. Okay. Yeah. Actually, actually, they say that the the best way if you want to uh, get a woman to be interested in talking to you is either to walk around with your kids or walk around with a pet, right? Yes, we, 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 we know we know how you know all the tricks, Danilo. <laughs> <laughs> Danilo's gonna have already. to give me some tricks here. He's gonna have to teach me. Step one, step one, claim to be an acupuncturist. Step two, get them naked. Step three, <laughs> poke them with things. Poke them. <laughs> step four, climax, and then step five, leave. <laughs> That's got to be a meme. Uh, just <laughs> poke them with things. There's no philosophy in there? No. Okay. Oh. Hey, I mean, they wanted acupuncture. You didn't describe <laughs> to the T exactly which kind of puncturing would happen. Oh, man. I hear another Danilo meme in the process. Oh, it's uh, every episode I get another one. I just have them stockpiled now at this point. I have like 30 Danilo memes that I'm just going to oh, trickle okay. out. Well, I guess I haven't seen any of them. No, 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 no. I want, I want everyone to get like... I want everyone to get like, where is Danilo memes went? You know, right, exactly. I like if I just crack one. one out every day, everybody's gonna be like, oh, okay, this was cool. But no, no. Dave's holding yeah. out on us. We need to see a new one every now and then. It's a, it's a supply know. and demand kind of well, thing, you know. No, he, they, they, I mean, my they, last Danilo me meme went like 220 likes and like 14 shares, 15 shares. So I think I'm gonna keep going up uh, upward on that one. Just make sure you hashtag them so we can keep seeing them. Oh, I always <laughs> hashtag them. You have to. We, we, we only had one one person that disapproved of them. Right, right. Remember that, Jeremy? The, oh, Alisa was not happy about. It. She trashed me so badly. Ooh, Phil's. She was. Yeah, she was not. I was painting Danilo in a bad light. I was making him look like a well, silly see, man. Well, see, Jeremy, yours like, are yeah, tasteless yeah. and crude. Mine are okay, refined. Okay. Okay. Excuse me, excuse exquisite. me, excuse me. <laughs> I'm the one who started the Danilo meme by, by doing an actual, an homage to my friend. I posted one of my favorite quotes by him and I put it on his picture. That's not how I remembered it. Not, not how I remembered it at all. Nice. Dave struck back with something a little crass. So, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm a guy. The competitive... That doesn't even sound in. like anything the in the realm thing, of and possibility. I said, I, that, and I said, all right, game on, motherfucker. And <laughs> we started going back and forth. And every time I put one out, Dave got a little raunchier. So I said, all right, that's it. And I went all out and I pulled any, every economic term I could. And I had like a 10-day stretch where I put out one a day. And they, yes, they got a little darker and a little more... <laughs> so it was subtle after the first couple of days and one of one of Danilo's former guests on his show took exception to some of them and gave me quite the tongue lashing um, oh really phrasing I, I was painting Danilo as this uh, you know Lothario or something and uh, yeah it was not it was not good for his image but I'm like not only I, I tried to explain to him, like not only does he appreciate it and I know that he's like genuinely laughing. Like I know Danilo's responses when he says he really found like I, I've known him long enough now. I know when he finds <laughs> and he would even tell me through like our, our voice messages that you know the 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 apps that we use. Um but his wife's liking him too. I'm like, so it's not like they get like obviously <laughs> the people that are closest to this get what I'm doing. They get right. that not, that this is not Danilo. That the whole the whole point that the reason that these people <laughs> up is because the people who know Danilo realize that this is so out of character for him. That exactly, that's, that's the funniest part about it. And what makes them like 
good that it would makes them you know it makes them work you know for the and I'm, I'm managing to slip different economic terms into these things so i'm like they get it why don't you and she's still right like, yell at me i'm like all right i get right. a lot of people like to take offense can't, at can't, someone can't, else's can't, behalf yeah. yes but i hate when another anar when another you know alleged anarchist um calls somebody out for being offensive i'm just like shut up you know what the hell <laughs> right don't you control your feels i'm not i'm not offended by your you know Anarcho Nazi crazy bullshit, you know, leave me the fuck alone, man. <laughs> Ugh, seriously. I, I think the one that went like uh, the biggest me uh, viral was the, um, uh, you know, I, I talked to hot moms about the Federal Reserve. Was that you, Dave? Yeah. The, yeah, Dave. Uh, that was Dave's one. I think, I think that went the biggest, right? Most shares. For... Yeah. That, that one in the Austrian business. So my my new one I'm working on, it says, ladies, this soul patch isn't going to wet itself. So. <laughs> <sighs> That, oh goodness, Dave! That one's that. that one. you know, actually, whatever, whatever happened with the with the Danilo shaving his soul patch? I thought I saw something. I, I, I we didn't get to five thousand likes, so he didn't shave Still it. I thought it. he was going to shave it. Uh, it <laughs> he promised me in confidence. I don't know. Yeah, I I'm kidding. Know. I just kind of threw Danilo's pan to the fire to get some quick likes. I, it didn't happen. <laughs> Our yeah, feet to the fire, I guess. Anyways, Basically. anyway, oh, Shane, uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, what you want to get out of Icono class. I really like that name. I consider myself an iconoclast, but uh, what, what, like, how, like, what are you guys like? Are you gonna like try to do any events or anything with that, or like just weekly barrages on like one specific thing? Or it's actually a fairly new page. Uh, like I created it a little while ago, and it just sat there. And then about a month ago, I started, you know, using it a lot more. And uh, a lot of the there's a lot of good you know material that comes out like you know Bernie against you know Bernie Sanders or Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton or even just you know I you know institutions like religion in general or government you know uh, which is a religion you know but um, the iconoclast I guess tries to topple you know fake heroes from you know religion politics and you know in, in other institutions and I think this is being an election year I think I'm we're probably going to focus on mostly finding the flaws and all the fake heroes out there but mostly i think it's it looks like it's decided at this point that trump might be getting the nomination so we're probably I really don't know what's going to happen so we're gonna, so gonna, we'll we see you on monday good, uh, and we got to get a lot get a lot of good anti trump memes and uh, oh that's that's not going to be hard right and uh, not hard at all yeah and i seen a really good bernie meme the other day that said uh, burn baby burn uh, fiscal inferno <laughs> that's <pretty laughs> funny yeah, Let's go and burn out. My, yeah. my, my, my new favorite one is that I just saw the other day the one with where it's got with the pictures of Bush, Obama, and Bernie, and you know Bush when he started, and then he look comes out looking gray. Obama when he started, he comes out looking gray. Bernie when he started, he comes out he's a, it's a coffin. yo. One of my one of the guys I know made that. <laughs> it's a I can't. Coffin? It's it, a coffin. Yeah. I can't remember who made that, but somebody I know made that. It was in one of my chats. I heard, on I heard somebody else. I think it was it might have been Chandler on the Fiends the other day say that somebody else did the same exact one except instead of the coffin it was the crypt keeper, which is just as funny. So like it's like it's so easy to like. I mean, I, I, please, I, I made that one meme that I just kept the stock, the, the, the photo set up for, because I knew I was going to use it again, where it's just the, oh. the picture of Bernie, and then it's that woman from the, uh, what is it, the Geico, is it a Geico commercial, or, the, or no, the, the one with the three women in the, in the kitchen, and she's like, it's not how this works. That's not, oh, Facebook, oh. she's talking about Facebook, because she tries to unfriend her by going, I unfriend you. She goes, that's <laughs> not how this works. So, like, like you, you just use that for pretty much anything Bernie quotes. You know, every other That's quote not of how his, this works. you could probably they would probably work with that. So it's like it's, much. they make yeah. it. Yes. They do make it. E they do make it so easy. So, and, uh, you know, I've I've yeah, discussed so, this. Uh, yeah, I've, I've discussed this before. We live in a meme and Twitter world where it's like, you know, yeah. that's what people's attention spans are. So why not run with it? And you uh, like I you do talk tend about to, uh, in a lot of the debates, I would devolve into meme speak after a while. You know, because uh, I've got a lot of my memes tagged, and I can just post them with a few keystrokes instead of typing out a whole paragraph. A picture is worth a thousand words. Yeah, and I would just leave it at that. You know, and yeah, so I mean, a lot of kind of class. I think we're going to see a lot of uh, anti-politician memes this, you know, this year. But that's just one thing that I'm working on. I also have uh, the pullout method going on, and that's uh, preaching agorist principles. You know. Um, avoiding the state and uh, re removing your support for it instead of you know trying to smash it or change it from the inside and then um, I also uh, this might just be a hashtag campaign but it might grow into more than that I want to reach out to people like uh, Sterling Luhin at the Psychologic Anarchist and uh, uh, people like Vigo Fox for example to combine a multidisciplinary approach 
towards spreading this message. It's not just philosophy. It can, you know, it, there's a there's a, a guy I, I'm gonna have to add you uh, friends with. He's really cool. His name's like Donald Meinschausen or something. Oh, that can't sounds say, familiar. I can't say his last name, but uh, he goes way back into libertarianism. He oh, was he was back when Carl Hesse Hess and and Rothbard were doing stuff. Well, yeah, what I want to get into mainly with this little hashtag campaign is uh, I've been posting little memes with like uh, no fear, hashtag no fear, no authority. Uh, it's I want to highlight this new paradigm shift that I think is right around the corner, you know, and it's really multidisciplinary. It's not just philosophy, it's spirituality and psychology as well. Yeah, I just ran into an old high school buddy who is an ex-Marine and he's also a voluntarist. So obviously the message is growing. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> I mean, so, obviously. So yes. Oh, sorry, you say this? Oh. Yeah, it, def it definitely is. I mean, we, we say it all the time. It's like, you know, all of us are part of the, the last major wave of, uh, you know, the, the, the shift in the last three to five years. You know, people like Larkin and people who have been around for, you know, 15, 20 plus years have said that, you know, in the last three to five years, especially since the, the Ron Paul, all the Ron Paul stuff, there's been this surge where, you know, where are, are quote unquote, we still the, you know, overwhelming minority yes but there has been a huge um you know increase and it it seems to continue to increase exponentially with uh you know every folly of the of the federal government and uh you know i i think you know what you're talking about is that's the you know that's basically the stuff i preach that's what i'm out there trying to do and it, i i think it's it's definitely you know it you know like you were saying before dave's whole attack from all angles thing yeah you you, you do there's there's different ways to get through to everybody and there's different ways to show people what can be done and everybody just has to tailor it to what they you know you tailor it to your own strengths exactly so, so you can be able to, you know whatever that is you know like i said for me i happen to start my own business and have now been successful you know I'm, i just started my 11th year you know so here i can show an example of what i was able to do just not not in the system to despite the system here exactly you yeah. know and now what i continue to do um you know and that's what i try to that's what i try to encourage other people to do you know start it off as a as a hobby if you have to what you know why you still have another job and hopefully you can create a service or a product or something or even if it's something that you're not super excited about but you find you recognize a hole in the market that you know you can fill you do it long enough who knows you it may become something you love but either way you you know, you've provided a service, you've made a difference, you've probably made yourself some money in the process, and if you're really unhappy with it, then you could sell for a huge profit and move on to something else that you prefer to do. But still, you're continuing the cycle, you're continuing the, the voluntary interactions between people and doing things, you know, even, even if you're in an industry or something where you have to fight against the regulations or whatever, you still end up doing it despite the system not because right. the system so that's still a win you know exactly. that's a win for that's a win for freedom that's a win for 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 volunteerism in general that's a win for just voluntary interactions for cap for whatever you want to call that that's just a positive step so why not take that instead of sitting back and bitching and going well the state's got me down and what can i do it's like well it's not going to go away by us sitting around bitching about it it's almost definitely not going away by going to war with it because that never works out. That reinforces you know? it. So, exa well, no, it, it may take it down, but you get something just as bad, if not, and most often worse, <laughs> right, following right behind. So, you know, every uh, one of the one of the biggest complaints we uh, I hear at least, you know, is like, you know, even if people are willing to accept the ideas, they still go, well, it doesn't matter because another government will form. Who cares if it might form? You know, instead of taking instead of taking all the other options where we've already seen it almost likely definitely will form when you're trying to talk about something that really hasn't been tried, because anything anything that's been done in the past, I still posit cannot be compared to what could happen today. The advancements in technology alone, especially with the Internet and the uh, the ability to communicate instantaneously encrypted all <laughs> around the world like that's 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 insane no anarchist no previous iteration of a stateless society could compete with that you know totally so it's agree. like i i think it's it's i've oh i've always i've said this since the beginning even when i found examples for people who who would say 
well, can you point me to a successful society? Okay, when you finally go back in history and you can point to ones, I said even then, it's still apples to orange. It's not the same thing. You can't look at those and say, well, that didn't work or that even if it did work. They didn't have the internet. The <laughs> yeah, it, it, like, it really does, man. It changes everything. And it gives, it gives us the ability to reach people. I mean, we have people who regularly download our show in Japan and Germany and um, where's the other? Um, France is one. France, Japan, Japan, Japan. Yeah, those are, the th those are the three big plays. And Russia, every once in a while, we get huge spikes from. Um, but, like, it's, you know, there are people everywhere. And that's what, it, that's what it's going to take. It's not going to, you know, the revolutions, all you need, I mean, I, I've said it before, 3% of any given population just standing up and saying no. Yeah, I've heard that before, and I think it can even be simpler than that. Like, we just need to give up our fear of and our belief in authority, and I think everything else can not necessarily fall into place, but, uh, you know, a lot of it will become kind of automatic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah actually, Jeremy, uh, you, you reminded me of a, a meme that Luis Mises posted recently. It was a really great quote. Uh, which is um, I love the emancipated human, by the way. Yeah, yeah, emancipated human. Yeah, he says that the the market is um, <clears throat> is using self interest in the service of others, and politics is using others in the service of self interest. Yep. <laughs> I thought that was an awesome, <laughs> an awesome, awesome quote. So, so, um, so why don't we uh, wrap up, um, uh, Shane? It, can you just give us uh, maybe uh, your favorite quote? We, we like to ask a lot of our guests. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Dave, I'm taking your place with this. No, that's fine, man. <laughs> Go ahead. I've All been right, wanting well, you to take more. Yeah. Uh, see, I don't know if I have it handy. Give me just a second. D Dave has no problem um, um, delegating, Jeremy. I mean, advocating authority. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that Jeremy. Uh, uh, responsibility, rather, not authority. <laughs> I'm sure that Jeremy has. <laughs> you're you're right about handy. that. Um, oh, the uh, Botay one? Um, yes. I, that's I my favorite quote. Resolve to serve no more, and you are at once freed. I do not ask that you place hands upon the tyrant to topple him over, but simply that you support him no longer. Then you would behold him like a great colossus whose pedestal has been pulled away, fall of his own weight, and break into pieces. Yes. Right, right. And the way I look at that is like, uh, you know, we, we support these institutions of, uh, of government with our hot air, right? Constantly blowing like a blowing a balloon in the air. And all we have to do is stop blowing <laughs> and it falls down. That's a great analogy, Denny. I've never heard that. That's really yeah. good. I can't take credit. I got that from Molyneux in one of his videos a while ago. And it really Molyneux has like, really just jumped off the reservation yeah, lately right, for let's me. Not, let's not get it. Though. We, we could go all night on a Molyneux. Molyneux he is on Trump's dick. All it right, is in, unreal. Talk, we'll, we'll talk about that next week, maybe. All right. Anyways. All right. Um, yeah, yeah. A little bait yeah, into but next I, week. I just wanted to say, I, I mean, I love that quote, too. That's 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 that's, that's one a great of my quote. favorites, too. Um, and uh, like, you know, Danilo would say, that is, a, that is a good analogy. I don't remember um, Molyneux giving that one, but it is a good one. You know, it's the same one as that meme with the, uh, you know, the politician with the podium standing out on the plank and all the yeah. people standing there on the edge. And the one guy just yeah. turns around and walks away. It's, you know, the, the people don't realize their true power because that's exactly. all it is. Yeah. That's all it is. People, people are so afraid. They think that you either have to fight or, 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 or put up with it mm -hmm. when you right. can simply just turn your back and say, hey, I don't need you anymore. So, exactly. Right. Right, we we shouldn't be afraid of the uh, you know the Maos and the Hitlers and the Stalins, right? We got to be afraid of the order followers, people willing to do their bidding on who, behalf who, of right. them. What was that quote? quote? Another not quote: We have nothing, we have nothing to fear but the fearful themselves. <laughs> That's very true. Fearful themselves. I like. Yep, that. I like that. Well, take us out, Danilo. So uh, yes, yeah, Shane, Shane, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Uh, great to talk Anytime. to you. Uh, <clears throat> Um, so you guys want to finish up, Jeremy? Uh, I no, I, I mean this. This was this was this was a good combo. It was, uh, it was good having you on, Shane. I uh, appreciate you giving us the time. Um, and hey, uh, I hope to do it again. Yeah, man. We uh, well, you know, we do want to use one. We're gonna we 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 have to recycle through people eventually because not too many people want to talk to us all the time. <laughs> well, if you ever have something like tonight where someone doesn't show up, I'm usually just sitting right here. Okay. Shane's on retainer. Got it. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. <laughs> retainer. Well, thanks a lot, Shane. Really, Ooh, really great cheers. conversation. Uh, so if anybody wants to help us out, um, you can just like, comment, share, subscribe. Ooh, we got a new Patreon. Channel. Let me, uh, hold on. Oh, Let me oh, give yeah. a shout out. Ooh, shiny. Yes. We got a new Patreon. Let me, uh, Tim, um, I'm not going to say your whole name, but Tim, thanks uh, for the 245 a month. I really appreciate that. Yeah. It really helps, helps pay for costs and stuff when you guys donate. Oh yeah, any any little bit helps. This is a this is a labor of love, and uh, monetary compensation is always appreciated and encouraged. So uh, 
So thanks a lot for that. You can donate. Yeah, Patreon is um, patreon.com slash Seas of Liberty to, uh, to help us out. So uh, please do so. So thank you, everyone, for a, con- a wonderful conversation. This is the Seas of Liberty podcast. Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Peace. Peace. Worms. Ha, ha, ha.